This is the Maiden FPV flight of my Peace Drone version 1. It is 45 inches long, 60 inch wingspan, has a 30 inch uh, lifting canard and weighs 1100 grams with a basic FPV setup on board. Tested payload so far 600 grams. It uses a pusher motor 260 watt 70 gram with a 10 by 4.5 prop. Flight time is 10 minutes on one 2200 milliamp hour battery. I'm getting started with some really basic FPV gear. This is the 200 milliwatt 5.8 gigahertz setup from Hobby King, which was $65, and their $16 CCD Sony a third inch camera. There's nothing all that exciting about this particular FPV flight, but it'll give you an idea of the capabilities of this FPV setup and its stock configuration. This was the max payload test flight, which was the normal configuration plus 600 extra grams worth of battery on board. Even though this is really short range, you can tell that with this stock omnidirectional antennas, there are quite a few dropouts and interference. I'd say it was adequate for an intro FPV flight, but I definitely plan on trying some circular polarized antennas in the future. There's a little tour around our field. There's a Costco right there, Costco gas station. It's an industrial building and a hill that I've been using for FPV reference. And there is unfortunately a lot of neighborhoods and development around the field, which keeps us pretty hemmed in right over the grass itself. Here's the 101 freeway we try really hard to stay away from. So under that tree right there is the picnic table, which is our base of operations. Fortunately, the aircraft design with the canard turned out to be really stable and easy to fly for a first FPV plane. So here is the Peace Drone version 1, 60 inch wingspan, 45 inch length, 30 inch lifting canard. Part of the idea here was to use a pusher prop to keep it out of the FPV lens, put the speed controller and the receiver completely on the back half of the aircraft, and the FPV gear and antenna fully forward so there's a complete segregation of all the electronic systems except for the power supply to the FPV from the battery there forward. Hopefully that'll minimize some interference. It's constructed with the standard Armin wing airfoil. Both the lifting canard and the main wing use the same airfoil with a five inch cord of the airfoil itself and about a one and a half inch control surface each case. So the main wing is mounted exactly flat and parallel to the fuselage. The angle of incidence is zero. The canard is mounted with a single thickness of foam board beneath it so its angle of incidence is about five degrees so whatever the aircraft angle of attack is the canard wing has an angle of attack five degrees greater than the main wing which gives it some really good stall characteristics and excellent longitudinal stability and pitch. These vertical stabilizers are designed to uh, fold up and under for transport with little uh, rare earth magnets right there that hold it up like that. The main wing control surfaces operate as an aileron on a single channel with mechanical differential aileron built in so that the upgoing uh, aileron moves more than the downgoing aileron and since it's on a single channel I can operate it with a gyro in place for a little bit of roll stabilization. All of the control surfaces use the uh, gift card control horn system, the servo buried in the wing. So far I've got it to break down like this with the canard, 
the fuselage and the full main wing. Here's the joint between the FPV 15 inch nose and the 30 inch uh, main fuselage. The posts around which the rubber bands are wrapped are actually what hold the two fuselage pieces together and that's separable for transport. The fuselage is one long square cross-section tube of foam board. This is a two inches by two inches. This is an RC timer, 1100 kV, 70 gram uh, motor, runs about 250 watts peak, and this is a 10 by 4.5 uh, standard slow flight prop. I personally often avoid pusher props due to the noise that it makes. However, it seems that with a, with a larger, slower turning prop and locating it back a bit from the control surfaces and from the fuselage that cause the turbulence that makes the noise in the first place, this actually turns out to be a pretty quiet setup, which is what I wanted. Here is the access door that has the receiver and a satellite receiver. Back in there, there's a UBEC. And then there's battery plug that feeds the uh, FPV as well as the receiver and servos. The battery, as currently balanced, goes forward here and the center gravity is right here. So the intention is to be able to put additional batteries right in that space and that could fit two abreast. Of course, as it's the piece drone, I had to work in a little tie-dye for good effect. The whole plane is covered in clear packing tape over white foam board, which gives it this nice uh, shiny white finish. The square nose thing, I admit, is pretty goofy looking, but it's a great way to protect the camera, but yet allow it to see out, as well as emitting cooling air in and around the camera that goes back to the transmitter, the speed control, and everything that's back there, but it doesn't add any additional profile other than the antenna which sticks out so it's all pretty much two by two as far as the uh, profile drag that's caused by the fuselage and the components in it. I'm using a 200 milliwatt 5.8 gigahertz uh, Hobby King transmitter with the currently with the stock antenna this will be the one of the first things to modify with this but I've just mounted it so that if it were to hit something or in transport or hit a tree or something it would fold back the transmitter itself is inside with the cooling fins and the heat sink facing in so that the cooling air that goes in the front of the plane comes back and hits the transmitter and keeps it cool. There's the cheap, simple uh, Sony CCD third inch board camera. It was $16, nothing fancy at all, and I've just sort of wrapped a piece of foam board around it, hot glued that, and then two-sided taped it inside. I mounted it on the top of the fuselage so that it can angle the lens down towards the ground a little bit, but yet still have it back in the fuselage a little bit to avoid some of the sun flare and to protect it against impacts somewhat. And then by hitting uh, grass and debris and so forth, it tend to go under there instead of right, at, right on top of the camera itself.